If you've seen my first video that gave you 10 great tips on how to solve the New York Times crossword puzzle, here is another 10 tips. Hey everybody, it's Puzzling Games, aka Art, and I'm here because I wanted to do another 10 tips to solve the New York Times crossword puzzle. Just a few seconds here to go back and remind you. If you haven't already seen videos on the first 10 tips that actually are the most important 10 tips, go back, links in the description, links right up there in the corner, watch the video on the 10 tips I give you on how to solve New York Times crossword puzzles. This is another 10 tips because people were liking the first video. Also, I have a video that solves every single day of the week of crossword puzzles for the New York Times. The Monday all the way to the Sunday, as you know, each one gets harder and harder and harder. They have different kinds of themes. So go watch all of them. Also, right before we get going, be sure to hit that like button, that subscribe button, blah, blah, blah. You know how that goes. And also, did you know that if you're a member, you get access to my videos early and you can even join my Patreon page. And by being a member or being a Patreon, there's an option for you to sign up and be one-on-one -on -one with me. We can talk puzzles. We can play games. Anything that's on my channel, you want to play a game with me, we can do it. Or you just want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, we can do it too. So with that, let's get into the 10 tips to solve New York Times crossword puzzles. Here we go. Number one, the answer is not in the clue. So if the clue is kind of diet, the answer does not have the words kind of or diet. And notice it's of, even pronouns, even prepositions. Any word that's in that clue is not in the answer. And sometimes maybe your instinct is like that you have an answer in your head, but if you look at the clue and go, oh, but my the, the answer I had in my head has the word the, and the is in the clue, I can tell you, therefore, you have the wrong answer in your head. Because if the the is in the clue, the is not in the grid in that answer. Number two, no repeated answer. I've seen this in the puzzles sometimes where it'll say like kind of something and then, you know, whatever, I don't know, whatever the answer is. And then later on, the same clue, kind of the something, it's exact same clue. I can assure you that there is never a repeated answer. If, if the clue was something sweet and you put sugar and then later on there was a clue that said nickname for your girlfriend, it would not be the same answer in the grid. They do not repeat an answer. Next, I want you to start thinking of words when you're reading a clue that could begin or end in a vowel. And the reason is, is because when you look at a grid, when you look at a puzzle, look across the top, look across the left column. Almost half the answers have to start with a vowel and look across the right and look across the bottom. Almost half the answers have to end in a vowel. It's just the way it's going to work. So I even wrote some examples here of like Iota or Oahu or the name Otto or Odi, which is a, a tribe or an oboe, an instrument, radii, the plural of radius, IPA, which is a type of beer, ale, which is a type of beer. If you start to think in terms of words that begin and end with vowels, you'll start to notice that, that they come up a lot. It's because they're needed to be able to fill in a grid, which leads me to the next one, which is also think sometimes of more than one word answers. So for example, you could look and say, make a vow, and you're thinking, okay, seven letters. What's a make a vow for seven letters? Uh, well, I can't think of what could be making a vow for seven letters. Well, the answer is, it might not be a seven letter single word. It could be make a vow, is to swear to. Swear to something is to make a vow. And also, for what it's worth, notice that swear to ends in a vowel. Another way to sneak in vowels at the end. Always be thinking like that. Trial and error. My, a fancy way of saying use a pencil. A lot of times people are afraid to write something in because they're not sure of what the answer is and they could be wrong. And to be honest with you, in the now that I can do like every puzzle of the week, including the Saturday puzzles every week, I know just because I've done it so many times, a lot of times, what's the answers. But then sometimes I'll get to yeah, clues and I'll be like, oh, it could be X or X, and I'll just write in one of them, knowing that I could be wrong later on. Don't be afraid to try something Make guesses knowing it could be wrong. Just remember that maybe later on when you're having trouble with something, go back to what you had written in and say, oh, you know what? When I wrote this in the first time, I wasn't 100% sure. This is probably the one that's wrong. But see, sometimes you'll be right. And sometimes what will help is that you'll also look at it and it'll kind of trigger what the right answer is. Number six is that the, the truth is most people who are really good at the New York Times know that there's just a, like 50 words that come up again and again and again and again. If you just know what those words are, it's going to go a long way. I now know sometimes when I look at a clue, I just know what the answer is because I know it's one of these rare, unusual words. 
and they can even try to like write it really in a like confusing way like where you read a clue and you're like i don't know what that means but then i'm like no i know what they're really saying like they might write some interest like really complex geography something or in other words and then i go no they just really want the fancy they just wrote the word lano l-l-a-n-o because they've probably used that a freaking thousand times and they're just how else can i give it as a clue but the answer is always the same i'm going to put a link in my description for a list of common words memorize them. If you just know them, you're going to be shocked how many times you just use it. Number seven is a little bit of a mind thing, which is I want you to think about the person who made the puzzle. There's really two people who had to do the puzzle. Number one is somebody had to make the grid. And in making the grid, they had to think about like writing letters that could make words going across and words going down. And it's a real mindset to make a crossword puzzle that works. If you've ever tried to write a crossword puzzle, it's really, really, really hard. I want you to think about that. If you're thinking about the person who wrote the puzzle, they don't want to box themselves in the corner in the grid. So think about it. Would they really have the letters B, W, and H next to each other? Probably not, because the what would they how would they be able to get out of it by constructing in other ways so sometimes when you think about what the person constructing the puzzle did you'll think well that he i, I don't know how he, that doesn't make sense so therefore these words can't be together it's easy to write clues and have the clues be fun and colorful and honestly that's the best part of making a puzzle but actually putting the grid together in a way that's going to work is difficult they're trying to make a lot of answers that make sense. So if you've got a whole knot of letters that don't make sense, he or she, the puzzle writer, didn't intend it that way. You probably got something wrong. Number eight, which is really, really, really important, which is foreign words. And if you've seen my first video where I talk about all these ways that you can tell, oh, it's plural, it's past tense, it's, you know, there's all these little tricks. But I didn't talk about the fact that a lot of times you'll see foreign words. And a lot of times they're not letting you know it's foreign words. Take a look at this first example. I wrote very in nice. If you reread it, you go very in nice, what would that mean? But in fact, another way to look at it is very in Nice. Well, Nice is in France. Therefore, how do you say very in French? The answer is tray. Or it'll say this next example below, things per hemplo. And you're like, well, wait a minute. Why is there a Spanish word in there? And what they're trying to say is things, for example, but because they wrote for example in Spanish, the answer would be in Spanish. So in this case, it's the word things in Spanish. How do you say things in Spanish? Cosas. They're really good with that because they'll come up with a town that sounds like a person or a noun. And the clue is that nice would be capitalized. They wouldn't say N-I-C-E lower. It's a, it's a place. Number nine, I-N-G L Y T I O N. So a lot of times the end of a word, even though you may not know the first half of the word, you might be able to, based on the clue, you might go, oh, this has a G at the end. Well, is it possible that it's a word that ends in I-N-G? Because if it could be a clue that would create a word that ends in I-N-G, and you're looking at the end and it's got a G, then you can probably pencil in the I and the N, and it's some sort of I -N word that ends in I-N-G. A lot of times, I actually don't know the first half of the word, but through putting in some pieces, I'm like, but I know that it's going to have to be an L-Y at the end. And that helps. Finally, number 10, practice, practice, practice. Perhaps not much of a tip, but actually it is. It's because, and this has taken me years since I started to do a, a crossword puzzle. I started a couple years ago. I couldn't even do the Monday. Eventually, when I got to the Mondays, I was able to do the Tuesdays and the Wednesdays. Now I'm up, I can do the sun, the Saturdays, the hardest puzzle of the week. It took a long time. And what was the hump I had to get over? It was the mindset of thinking like a crossword puzzle constructor or crossword puzzle doer thinks. It's actually a trick. It's a mindset, I wrote, and it's true. If you've ever seen my other videos on this channel where I solve, say, Rubik's Cubes, I always say, like, if you look at a Rubik's Cube, it, like, it makes no sense. It's like billions of combinations and all these colors, and what do you do? But once you know how to do a Rubik's Cube, you're like, oh, well, really, it's about six algorithms that you just got to look at, recognize, and do. And then it kind of, you can solve a Rubik's Cube. The same thing is true with a crossword puzzle. It's a trick. It's a mindset. As soon as you start to recognize patterns and realize what's happening, what the person who wrote the crossword puzzle is doing, what day of the week this is, knowing all these other tricks I do. You start to look at it and go, oh yeah, I know what that answer is or has to be. If I see like a UT in the middle of a word and I'm like a long word, but there's a UT in it, what? then I'm like, oh, think about it. The first letter could, the letter before it's probably an O, something, something out. 
I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. If it was helpful and you want to go back, again, watch my other videos, my, my first 10 tips, where I watch every episode where I do all seven days of the week. Plus, I have other games. Become a member of my Patreon page. Join my... I, I feel like I'm just shilling here for to sell, but really, I'm, I actually would love to help. I love doing this, and I'll keep doing it. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.